What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up with the Commanders. Today, I am joined alongside William Herman to discuss our top 10 receivers in the 2024 NFL Draft. It is a very loaded class, William, and first yep. off, how's your day and how are you doing? Because we've got some very good players to go through today. We've got some great players. Yeah, this is one of the date in my in my memory, at least, in my, in my time covering the NFL Draft, one of the deepest classes I've seen. So it should be good. It should be interesting. Yeah, it definitely is. There's a lot of different names that could potentially be in. I've seen maybe up to 20, 25 different uh, names that I've seen in people's top 10. Yep. It just shows the depth of this class, which exactly. I think is uh, very apparent. So, again, the receiver is, se is seeming to be now one of the strongest uh, one of the strongest positions in terms of every year now. We've seen a strong receiver class last year, a strong receiver class this year as well, even though they're um, – well, yeah, and then in 2022. So, uh, right. Let's just get let's just get started. We'll first start with our uh, honorable mention, um, if that's good. William, who, yeah. who do you have just outside of your top ten? So, just outside of my top ten, I have. So, coming in for my first honorable mention, I have Malachi Corley, um, Western Kentucky. He's a really good receiver after the catch, and he just missed out on my top ten. Yeah. Um, he's my first honorable mention that I have outside of the top ten. Yeah, I had him just outside of the top 10 as well. My number 11, though, was, I mean, this might be a little controversial, was Ladd McConkey. Uh, I, I know he's been people's probably consensus around 7 to 8, maybe 9. Uh, I had him at right. 11. So with McConkey, I feel like, again, he's a great route runner. Uh, he finds the open holes in the zones. He does everything good. He doesn't really do anything great, and especially because of this, uh, how small he is can't really catch any contested catches, can't really go up to get anything. Uh, that's kind of what separated him from some of the other guys that you're going to see uh, that made it into the top 10. So, um, I mean, right. with Corley, if you want to talk about Corley a little bit more, we've talked yeah. about some, some guys that are like uh, Devo Samuel-esque. And I know exactly. there's always there's a guy every year who, who says that, but what about Corley kind of intrigues you in the NFL? Yeah, Corley. So he was in all of Division One. He came in second. I don't know who is first, but came second in uh, missed tackles in Division One. So obviously he's very, very good at making players miss. Great after the catch. Um, one of the things that was just concerning, obviously, he, there's nothing he can do about it. Just the level of competition in some of the teams he was playing obviously isn't as good as some of the others. But I can't hold hold him against that. It's nothing he can do. But I was a little concerned. Um, some games just. Like a lot of times when he has a more physical corner, like a lot of times he'll he'll be kind of stuck and gets in gets the route taken advantage of by the DB. So that was one concerning thing. But like I said, if he's in open space, he has a touchdown ability every time. So I, he was very impressive to me. Um, but obviously, it'll be interesting to see how he transits to the NFL. Just because, like I said, there aren't that many players coming out of Western Kentucky in that MAC conference that usually make it to the NFL. So it should be interesting to see his transition. But I I really liked him. I really like the film. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and with Corley, too, you could really see how Western Kentucky took advantage of his um, ability to make players miss in space. A lot of screens to him. They didn't really run a bunch of in terms of like deep routes uh, down the middle of the field. It was mm -hmm. more just want to get him in space, get him on the outside, make him uh, let him do his thing. So Corley's a guy that I'm very intrigued. I had him uh, like somewhere around my uh, 13th through 15th. Can't yeah, the exact number, but somewhere around there. Um, number ten now. Well, I'll start with you. Who, who do you have at number ten? So at number ten, I have Xavier Leggett at number ten. Um, he is someone I think throughout the draft process has really been rising a lot through a lot of people's boards. Um, very physical receiver. Um, South Carolina had a very good year. This is his first year of real true production. Like in previous years, he had like just a hundred yards in his first two years, but this year he really put it all together. Um, and I, I liked, I enjoyed the, I think I, I thought he was very intriguing, very interesting, very, very fast, physical, kind of that AJ Brown, DK Metcalf build, not as tall, but yeah, very physical. Him and Spencer Rattler had a good thing going on there. And I thought the tape was impressive and he filled my number 10 spot. Yeah. Uh, Leggett, I'm just gonna say now I have him at number nine. So we, we were kind of nine. similar on where we have yeah. Leggett. Uh, I'll just talk about him now since we're already here, but yeah, Leggett, like you mentioned something that, uh, he's definitely gone up draft boards as the draft process has gone on didn't really have the greatest senior bowl and the com combine as well i mean tested i'm pretty sure he tested well just 
in terms of uh, the on-field workouts didn't really do so well, especially at the Senior Bowl. But um, still, just the size that he has, uh, I know he came in a little bit, what, he was listed at 6'3 or 6'4 on the South I think Carolina he was, website. Yeah. And then he came, he in, came at in at 6'1. Exactly. Yeah, and so that, that was a, a little bit concerning. But again, just the production he had last year, it is a late breakout though for him, which also is kind of concerning, but for receiver prospects. But right. again, I really like. I'm a nine. My number ten was actually a, a, a bigger receiver, a very big receiver, Johnny Wilson. Uh, I know Johnny Wilson. Know that, wow. Yeah, Johnny Wilson. I I know some people, um, especially he's kind of been one of the bigger fallers. I would say as a receiver throughout this draft process, for sure. he kind of came in. You're like, oh my goodness, a six seven. Uh, 200 and what was it 30 pound receiver that's like a tight end out there he's a tight end and, to me i was just gonna say yeah yeah it's like a tight end and uh even though um wilson you, there's some struggles between his drop issues and all of that i really feel like if if he just doesn't he can go up and catch th- make those contested catches just the simple stuff that is really really hard for him for some reason but I mean, I it's it's a project. It's a project. If you draft Wilson, for sure, I have a late two on him, but um, I think I think the high ceiling that he has definitely kind of outweighs some of the weaknesses that he currently has, and with some development, could definitely be a playmaker in the NFL. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I I gotta say, I hear I hear your opinion, but he doesn't even. I don't think he cracked my top like eighteen. Yeah. For receivers, but this class is deep, so any receiver can be really good. But I hear, I hear what you're saying. I, I, I see it. Yeah, uh, I know. I, yeah, the consensus for him has gone from potentially being a top ten guy to now, like you mentioned, I it's he's not even in some people's top twenty. So yeah, uh, that's that's yeah. kind of surprising to me, at least. But um, like I, I see why people are lower on him and stuff. There's uh, there's a lot of things to worry about with with Johnny right. Wilson, but. Still, so, uh, I think the ceiling that he has kind of outweighs everything else. Uh, who who do you have at number nine? I know I said I already had Lee. So at number nine, this is a player that has very, very or this. Yeah, I should say I wasn't as high on him early in the process, but someone I really enjoyed watching. At number nine, I have Roman Wilson um, out of Michigan. Mm-hmm. I really like Roman Wilson. I thought his tape was pretty impressive. Very very savvy route runner. He's tough. He's physical. Um, and I think he was Miss- Michigan's best pass catcher this year, and I thought yeah, he, he was, was very impressive. Yeah. yeah, so I, 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 to me, I have a mid second on him. I thought he was pretty impressive, and he originally wasn't even in my top. I want to say like fifteen, but the more I watched, the more I was impressed, and he rose all the way up to number nine for me. Yeah, uh, for Wilson, he he just missed out on my uh, top ten. I believe he's twelve for me. So uh, he just That's missed fair. out. But I, I see uh, with Wilson, you look at. Um, the Michigan offense in this year, when when they had to go to a guy, they didn't pass the ball a lot. But exactly. when Jimmy McCarthy had to go to a guy, it was Roman Wilson. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Wilson nine. I, I mean, I'm not that mad. I was just I'm a little bit low on him, but again, it's a stacked class. A lot of things, a lot of players too. Yeah, like like these. Any and yeah. honestly, for me, like 15 through eight could all be interchangeable. Like a lot of guys. Maybe we can go over at the end missed out, but they may seem like it's not like the ranking. I should say, like if it's 15 in this class, it really isn't a 15. Like I think a lot of these guys would be top 10 in other classes. It just happens that this class is much better than others. Yeah. Especially, I mean, you have the top guys or whatever we'll get to a little bit later, but beyond that and round two and round three, we could definitely be, uh, see, I could, we could see like what five guys, six guys go in round one and then, six or seven more just in round two which is just crazy so exactly it's uh, gonna be it's gonna be it's, madness it's gonna be madness uh who do you have at number eight at number eight i have jermaine burton jermaine burton interesting i i interesting. jermaine burton honestly could be number four for me i'm that high on jermaine burton but i just couldn't do it i i i made a tweet about this earlier i was so impressed with this tape i don't know how He's been kind of flying under the radar. Like I see him on mock draft simulators at like 110, and I just don't understand how it's – to me, his tape was very, very impressive. Very good hands, um, great vertical threat. And I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I loved Jermaine Burton. Um, and he could be as far – like I know I said four, maybe not actually a four, but like an early second round pick for me. Yeah, I will say I'll talk more about Jermaine Burton in a little bit. But one thing that I think the – the production is there on the on the field, but I think 
there were some concerns about his character and all of that. Exactly. Kind of yeah. a reason why he's been a little bit farther down. But my yeah. number eight was one of my favorite players in this entire class. You can give me my Florida bias, whatever, but it was Ricky Pearsall. Um, I figured, Pearsall, yeah. Yeah, Pearsall to me is, uh, I mean, he's one of the best. I think I would even consider him probably the best route runner in this class. Uh, I think he can, he manipulates defense as well, uh, attacks and exploits the blind spots of safeties. He's got great hands. He had two great catches this year, one against, um, I believe it was Charlotte, where he had like almost looked like the Jordan logo, reached up to exactly. grab, um, grab it with one hand and then took a big hit. He, he's got really sticky hands like that. And also just finishing through, con- finishing the catch through contact is something that um, impressed me a lot with him as well. Uh, he's not he's not the biggest guy either. He's a pretty small, but uh, he is I believe his RAS grade. Yeah, he was he had a nine point seven one uh, relative athletic score, which which is great for a guy like him. He's probably been one of the biggest risers uh, at wide receiver for sure. Over for sure. At the, yeah, at the Senior Bowl and at the Combine as well. So that's why I had a number eight, number seven. Now who'd you got for number seven? I have um, Brian Thomas. Brian Thomas, interesting. At number seven, which is very – a lot wow. of people have him as – consensus, I think, for him is four for most people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have him at seven. Where do you Where do you have Thomas? I have Thomas at four. So Four. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I just – I don't know. I like – again, I, I'll keep saying this. The class is so deep, so the seven doesn't really as like do it justice. But I just prefer – it wasn't really necessarily a knock on Thomas. It's just me preferring the people above him. But um, I don't know. I, I just wasn't – like I said, I, I think the guys – the three people I have from that four to seven range, I happen to just prefer more than Thomas. He, I like his size. His, I think he has pretty good speed. I don't know what his athletics – or his RAS was. But I thought he was – I don't know. I thought through contact he was kind of struggling to find through contact for a player his size at 6'4", um, like to fight through contact. And I don't know. I thought – for someone six four, I thought he plays a little smaller than he is, but I, I don't know. It wasn't necessarily a knock on him. Like I said, I just kind of preferred the three above him. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about Thomas right now. So Thomas, uh, to me, something that stood out was just the speed and the electricity that came from that yeah. LSU offense. You look at neighbors. You look at Thomas. Uh, I felt like Thomas's speed, especially for how big he is, is I mean, six four. Is just the speed size combo was something that really impressed me. Um, he's got a basketball background and you can really see it on film. He can go up and make contested catches like left and right. That's kind of a specialty. Uh, the route tree isn't incredibly large for him, which, which I see why is one of the things that could knock him down. But, um, I just think his ability to go up and make these contested catches, he's one of the best contested catch receivers in this draft is something that, uh, some of these other guys I don't think can do as well as him. I know there's guys that can make contested catches and do it at a high clip, but just Thomas, I think, is just on another level compared to some of these other guys. But um, yeah, yeah my number seven was AD Mitchell. So oh, no. I, 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 I had Mitchell at seven. I'm lower on him than uh, a lot of other people. I, I, I lost his report somewhere. Hold on. Um, I, my AD Mitchell report is, I think, the longest in this. He's probably my one of the not not my the best, but one probably my favorite favorite player. Yeah. in the in the, in this yeah. in this class, uh, he's my number four. So, yeah, I'll start at um the good the good things that I think he's a variety of releases to be pressed, gets low off the snap, make sure it's uh, hard for defenders to press him or make sure the stun uh, his momentum off the snap. Uh, he shifts momentum well during routes. Solid route runner when he when he wants to be. Um, he's, he's got great ball tracking ability. Uh, sticky hands, only a one point eight percent drop rate. Wide catch radius. Uh, attacks DB's blind spots well. Can make catches through traffic. Uh, great awareness and reaction time. Um, and knows when to show his hands to his defender. And minimize the time the defender has to react to the ball. So uh, that's the good things for Mitchell. Some things that. I did not love was that he's a liability in the blocking game. Um, half the yep. time, half the time his routes are a little, little lazy. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, half the time. Um, big frame, but in my opinion, lacks the ability to enforce contact with the DB. I feel like it's more of the DB attacking him rather than him 
boxing out the TB to make catches. And then sometimes he looks like he's just jogging out there. Um, yep. Can't break contact Fair. after the catch and overall lacks yak ability, only 3.2 uh, yards after catch per reception. So that's um, that was my report on Mitchell. I had him at seven, which again, I, I have a mid to high second round grade on him. I still think he's a great receiver, has a pretty high ceiling, just the effort concerns are definitely there. And also, he doesn't really do anything in run block. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely fair. Yeah. Yep. Uh, who's, who's your guy at six? I have at number six, I have Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin. Interesting. Interesting. Yep. Wow. Okay. Who do you have at six? We, we, I want to start with Troy Franklin because Troy Franklin's not in my top 10. He's, wow. Wow. 13th guy. So I had a third round grade on him as well. So I, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on Franklin and, um, yeah. Yeah, I differ here a lot. Yeah, I really liked Franklin. I li- I enjoyed his tape. Um, I thought he obviously there's elite speed. I thought he could, very good separator. Um, he had, he has a very good range of like separation packages, like at the line of scrimmage. Always and one thing I would say, like as much as anyone in this class, I always found on his tape, like the D- he leaves the DBs constantly guessing because his range, like his route tree, I thought was very, very wide. Um, and I thought he was good after the catch. Um, quick, like I said, detailed route runner. I was just impressed, and I think he can be a very successful pro. Um, so it, I kind of, I think it does depend on the scheme, but I think his ability to manipulate DBs, he has good speed. Um, it made him enough for me. I have a, 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 a early second on him, but I, 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 I overall, I, I like Troy Franklin. I think he was good. Um, I think he ran like a four four, which I thought was a very a little not as not what I expected, but. Overall, he comes in at wide receiver six for me. Yeah. Um, the reason why I had Franklin out of my top 10, which again, a lot of these guys are really close. Like you mentioned, from that eight to 15 yeah. range, all, all these grades are really close. But uh, something that to me, I just felt like his ball tracking ability on deep balls was kind of overrated. Um, mm-hmm. I felt like it, sometimes he, gets, he just gets caught in, I don't know if it's just a light or something, but he just loses the ball in the air. Um, the, there's some drop issues, I would say, with Franklin as well. Uh, not to the extent of guys, um, of some other, other guys in this class. And I, I, I still had Johnny Wilson over him, but it's very close. Um, I, here's some drop issues. Uh, like, he, like you mentioned, um, he can turn on the Jets, attack deep. He's got good route running skills. He can uh, quick, quickly flip his hips. Uh, I just don't think he has that large of a catch radius. He's kind of a lighter wide receiver, gets pushed around a lot. I have I'm listed at 187. I don't think that's the combine what he was listed at. I, I, don't, I didn't see it, but that's what uh, Oregon had him listed as. So, yeah, kind of just like a lighter wide receiver, which in the past hasn't really turned out. You look at guys like Jalen Hyatt and some others. Um, yeah. That, who he kind of reminds me of. So, I, I have a... It's an early third, but a third round grade on Franklin. My guy at six was Jermaine Burton. I have him higher than you did. I love Jermaine Burton. I'm hoping Same. his character issues don't really like come up again, but uh, I mean, if, I'm kind of like bouncing around here. Yeah, but for Burton, good acceleration and speed downfield, elite ball tracking ability on deep routes, positions himself uh, really well on 50-50 balls, which is something that a lot of the other guys kind of in the same tier as him struggle to do. Um, he's got that dog in him. <laughs> like you can see it on film. He's, he's going out there and he wants to put a DB in the turf and he wants to moss him or something. Uh, he's a shifty route runner, um, puts effort into run blocking, which I was actually a little bit surprised by. And then he's also physical with his hands during his route, but he's a little bit of a smaller frame, um, struggles getting off the line and press. He is okay. Yak, nothing incredible. And, um, Struggles maintaining contact uh, with the defender and run block usually loses after like half a second. So uh, that's yeah. kind of what I had with Barton, but I really like him. I gave him a high two as well. I actually have him with the same grade as AD Mitchell. So yeah, or like mid to high fair. two. So yeah, it, it look, was, I I like, like some of the people I have at like 15 could be like an early three, even like this class. I think, like I've said before, is, is so, is so loaded. Yeah. All right. Into the top five we go. Who do you have at five? 
Uh, top five, th- I, I think his consensus is around like five to eight. I have Lad McConkey. I really like Lad McConkey. I know you mentioned he didn't make your top yeah. ten, right? No, he did not. He did. He, he did not. I mean, yeah. Eleven. Yeah, I, I, I thought one thing I was impressed with, very good speed. He had a, I think he ran four, three, eight or something like that at the combine. Yeah, very impressive. So I was very impressed with his speed. I thought he had great acceleration, good route runner at the top of his breaks, um, good manipulator for the DBs. Good flexibility, can be a downfield threat as well. A lot of people think, oh, he's in the slot. He can't be a good down threat. But I, th- I was impressed. He had some good vertical vertical catches. Um, gets the speed in a hurry, good route runner. Some of the negatives, very skinny frame. Um, he struggles to fight through contact a lot with physical DBs, which is a concern. But I just thought, watching the tape, he could be another very successful, like, savvy slot runner or slot, uh, slot wide receiver in the NFL. And I think, he, I think his game translates well. So I, I, I can't. Um. Yeah, I just think he he's a receiver that I see being successful in the NFL for a long time. Yeah. Uh, at number five, I have Keon Coleman. You don't have Keon Coleman in your top ten, right? I do not have Keon Coleman in my top yeah. ten. Yeah. So at number five, I, he is he's like thirteen here. for me. Wow. All right. So the the thing with Col- Coleman, I'm gonna make the case for Coleman here. Um, he's a very big wide receiver, six four, two sixteen. Uh, he's young. He's only twenty years old at draft time. Um, he doesn't have great speed, but again, he's a big physical wide receiver. He uses his size to his advantage, moves DBs out of the way. Uh, he's one of the best contested catch uh, threats in this entire class. Had one of the best, I believe, contested catch percentages um, in the country last year from PFF. Uh, he's elite at high, po- at high pointing the ball. He's agile, especially for his size. Um, and in my opinion, he can make defenders miss in space when he needs to as well after the catch. So, uh, yeah, that's why I had on Coleman, and I gave him like a a late one to early two. So mm-hmm. I know what you're gonna say for for Coleman not yep not being that. Just say it. Go ahead. I was just gonna go. I mean, there was a couple of things. Obviously, his forty time. I'm not gonna jump and judge him just off the forty time. I know his uh, gauntlet hurt. drill was very good <laughs> for the speed, but I I when I look at Coleman, like 34 percent of his targets were contested, which was very like it just shows he really can't create separation that often, but. The thing I I was thinking about is maybe it, like maybe it won't matter in the NFL. Maybe he can just continue to be successful with just the jump ball catches. Like he played Division One basketball, very athletic. Um, so maybe maybe the separation concerns won't matter. Maybe he can just continue to just go up there and his good hands. But for me, the separation concerns were there because I think we've seen time and time again a lot of length or tall big receivers not succeed but uh, he, he definitely could like i said the guys that i have lower could end up being big names um, but yeah i i just wasn't impressed with the ability to separate um, yeah but yeah, yeah i don't know i mean coleman definitely probably one of the more um like i've seen a variety of opinions on him from him not being i mean at the beginning of in like december and january he was considered to be like a first round lock almost. i was I just know. gonna say that yeah yeah, he was considered to be a first round lock with the in the same tier as the neighbors in Odunze, maybe slightly below them, exactly. but he was like the consensus wide receiver four. As time went on, people found out more about Brian Thomas, people found out more about McConkey and some of these other guys. Coleman kind of slipped a little bit. The combine happened. The combine didn't really help him that much. And he's out of some people's top ten. And so yeah. I, I see the case for Coleman. I think it's definitely a pretty big risk by taking him. You're kind of betting on the contested catchability over his lack of separation. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, that's who at five. I think we both said who we had at four already. Who do you, who do you have at four again? I have A.D. Mitchell at four. You had, yeah, you had A.D. Mitchell. I had Brian Thomas. So, um, yeah, we flipped. Over, I think you had – Yeah. You had Thomas at – or I had Thomas at seven, and you had so we flipped. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I had eighty Mitchell at seven, so we kind of flipped those guys. But uh, yeah, we both have the same consensus top three, unless you're gonna pass yep. something crazy. But I'm, I'm assuming. Um, who do you, who do you have at three actually? Because I have three. Malik Neighbors at three. Interesting. All right, I have Odunze. Who do you have? I have Odunze. Oh, so okay. We're off on this one. Right? Okay. You you want to make yeah. the case for Neighbors real quick? I'll make the case for. Oh wait, uh, for. All right, hold, hold on. Uh, it's actually, you make the case for Odunze to be wide receiver too. I'll make the case for Neighbors to be wide receiver Okay, two. sure. You want to go first or you want me to go first? Um, You can go first if you want. 
Yeah, I just thought no one. I mean, as far as just this year's tape, I I don't think anyone. Malik Neighbors, maybe Malik Neighbors, but I would say Neighbors and Udine's over the top, the most productive receivers this year. Obviously, great size. I feel like he just comes down with everything. And when you think of his size, a lot of people would come to the conclusion that he's not a good route runner, but he's a very good route runner. I thought he was very uh, great ball skills, catch radius, and he had some flashes of the yak ability. I thought a lot of times underrated for his size. Um, and like I said, just continues to catch down with everything. This game against Michigan State, I wrote in, he had a couple of these great, great deep balls from Michael Penix. Um, and I thought he was, he's not slow whatsoever. I think he ran like 4 4 4 or something like that. So good speed for his size. I thought he was fluid in change of direction, easy mover. I thought I, everything I thought was pretty positive. I didn't really come away with any big, big negatives on the dunes. I just, I don't see a world in which he doesn't succeed in the NFL. I just thought. Everything, every well-rounded player, really. Yeah, I think with a, a doomsday is probably, in my opinion, like the safest prospect to go with in terms of the top of his class uh, at wide receiver. For sure, receiver. there's not really that much um, that you can take away from him. But for neighbors, uh, you look at the filming. First thing you see is how fast he is. He is very, right. very fast. Uh, what, what are you running? A four, three, four, three, something. Four, three something yeah, four, three, something. Um, so neighbors is very fast and, uh, he can turn, he can turn it up in top gear really quickly. He can, uh, deaccelerate as well, which I think is almost as important when you're a very fast receiver, uh, you want to expand your route tree. You got to deaccelerate really, um, quickly as well, which I think he does, um, pretty well. Uh, he has, um, doesn't really have a variety of releases and sometimes takes too many steps to start the play, but it doesn't really end up mattering because of how fast he is. Um, right. And yeah, his route running, once he get once he gets into his route, is really solid. I like that a lot. Um, tracks the ball in the air well. Um, I'm kind of going through. Yeah, uh, he does, he's not that big of a liability in the run game. As a blocker as well, he's probably one of the best receivers after the catch, in my opinion. Uh, in terms of these top receivers, can break break tackles mm -hmm. in space. I believe he was one of the top guys in terms of broken tackles last season. I, I don't remember exactly what spot he was, but I believe he was uh, in the, in that top ten at least. Um, yeah, very quarterback friendly as well. I feel like, especially with Jane Daniels and his uh, scrambler drills, I think neighbors is definitely. Um, I mean, there's still some room to grow, but uh, I think neighbors does a very good job of kind of opening space up for Daniels to run. So, Yeah, for sure. Great. Like I said, this isn't a knock on Neighbors whatsoever. I think Neighbors will be awesome, too. It's just I happen to prefer Odunze. Yeah. Um, yeah, with the Odunze. Uh, oh, one thing with Neighbors that I think with Odunze, people see more of is Odunze's contested catch ability. I think Neighbors' contested mm -hmm. catch ability is pretty inconsistent, but it's there. And if to me, if you show it on film and I, I see it, then it, it can be there in the NFL too. Like it, it's there. He can yeah. do it. It's just, it needs more development. And again, he's only six foot and he's 200 pounds. So kind of a smaller guy um, in terms of players that can go up and catch 50, 50 balls. So with that, yeah, I thought, with that, yeah, you want to go ahead real quick. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, I thought a lot of in, in just his tape in 2023 was probably the most fun to watch. I mean, the burst, the explosiveness you mentioned just, I don't think there was a receiver production wise that was better than him this year. So neighbors is definitely a valid opinion at two, but I just happen to prefer what I'm doing today. I believe he had over 1500 yards. It could be slightly off on that, but he had something crazy. Yeah. Um, something crazy means, like that. Yeah. At number one, I'm assuming we both have the same person here. Uh, I have Mar Marvin Harrison. You have Marvin Harrison. Wow. Yeah, Marvin Harrison. So surprising. Uh, yep. Yeah. So you want to talk about Marvin first? Yeah, just another player, kind of like Odunze. I literally, I, I, I watched. Um, I think every, every, every game that, um, that I was able to, and just not nothing really negative. I thought he was very good, dom very again dominant throughout his years at Ohio State. Good acceleration, good speed, footwork and agility. Um, can stop. I thought he could stop on a dime, adjust to the ball. Very good. Um, ball skills. Um dominant outside but can also play the slot as well so he has some versatility to him um and i think he's just the best in this class i think he, there's no one more well-rounded than marvin harrison jr in this class um and he's also a threat to go vertically so he can really beat you anywhere as far as the three levels of the field 
Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I guess I couldn't really come up with any negatives on him. I don't, I don't know. I guess the yeah. yak is okay after the catch. That's the only thing I could think of. But yeah, um, the yak is okay, but like he's got great speed, his long strides. He's a, I mean, he's six four to a five, really big receiver, and he's yeah. physical at the catch point. Pretty much comes down with almost anything. Uh, mm-hmm. he can beat small, small DBs that are quick. He can beat longer DBs as well. He's very smart route runner. I feel like, um, with just how he manipulates defensive backs using his leverage is something that is just really special. Uh, his balance of like speed, size, strength. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's all there for Barbara Harrison. And yeah. He's my, he's my best player in the class. Like, I don't know. If, if, he's uh, mine too. Your big board's looking like, yeah. But um, he he's he's going to be a star in the NFL, and whether it be the Patriots or some other team that gets him, they're getting a stud at wide receiver. So, yeah, that, yeah. that's gonna. It's been. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say that, like, uh, yeah, that's our top ten. Is there any other guys you want to mention uh, that you're just outside as well? Yeah. So just outside, I mentioned Malachi Corley early in. Um, earlier on the show, but just outside the top 10, Keon Coleman, we talked about him, Malachi Corley, um, Javon Baker, I like. Yeah, I like him um, too. Yeah. Jalen Polk, I like. Mm-hmm. And then I think my last guy, I liked Jamari Thrash. There is, I didn't get access to too much film on him. I don't think Caddy had too many games on him, but yeah. I, I like those are my guys I have in the honorable mention in kind of that 15 to 17 range. Yeah, oh, Persall. and uh, Xavier Worthy. Sorry, yeah. Xavier Worthy and Pearsall. Or Pearsall, yeah. I don't know how to say it. Wait, do you, do you not have Pearsall in your top? I didn't even realize you didn't have Pearsall in your top. Oh, yeah, I don't have – he's uh, wow. he's 12. 12. I know. I mean, best hands – maybe the best hands in the class? I don't know. Yeah, that's – okay, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, I had – I already said McConkey, Port Franklin – I like Jalen McMillan a lot. Uh, I have him actually yeah. over Jalen Polk. So that's kind of where I stand with McMillan. I think he has great speed. Um, he's super shifty as well. So it breaks a lot of tackles. So I have McMillan. Um, Brendan Rice has been kind of one of the bigger fallers, I would say, in the last few weeks with just some of these other guys that people have ranked over him. What are your thoughts on Tez Walker? Cause, I do not yeah. like I have like a fifth-round grade on Tez Walker. I have a fifth-round grade on Tez Walker as well. So I'm not a fan. I'm not that big of a fan either for uh, Tez. I mean, he is a great, looks like a great guy and whatever, but um, yeah. I mean, there's just some effort concerns, especially was it the UVA game? I think it was the UVA game. Like that last drive was just that was painful to watch. But um, yeah, yeah. So those are some of my other guys. Uh, but yeah, I think that that'll do it for this week's episode. Uh, William, where can people find you and your work? Because I know you just wrote an article. Yeah, I think you can find all my work just on my Twitter, underscore William Herman. Um, there's a link to all my all my publishings um, on TikTok and on in TWSN, so you guys can find me on Twitter there. Yeah, um, it was great having you on again. I mean, your knowledge is Yeah, thank you so much for having fun me. To listen to. So uh, that'll do it for this week's episode of Keeping Up With the Commanders. Next week's episode will be uh, the full mock draft, the final mock draft before – the draft in what like nine days something like that 11 days i think yeah we're days. getting close 11 days we're yeah. getting very close and yeah big big decisions looming for adam peters and company so that'll be it for this yep. week's episode of keeping with the commanders see you guys next one peace